It's interesting that Pastor Wilhelmson also agrees with uh, Cain being the literal seed of Satan. And um, we talked about that on our discussion the other day. Um, he had some interesting angles on it, which I, I uh, w- are opposite of what I had been taught or believed, and I'll, I'll discuss those in a, in a little bit. But the reason I think you're ostracized, you, Dr. Joy, myself, and whoever takes a position that Cain was, in fact, a paternal twin, and he was, in fact, the uh, offspring of Satan, is because of that. That is the biggest secret, who the children of so Satan too. are. It's the biggest right. secret. Other than, the, other than the Nephilim among us, which is basically right. the same thing, just in a different yeah, form. Exactly. Uh, those are the biggest secrets. And, of course, they're going to come under tremendous attack. Of course, the populations have been brainwashed to, to attack those ideas. They're MEMEs, memes planted in the minds of the consciousness of the populations to attack that because it has to be hidden at all cost. Yeah, I think you're right. That is the biggest secret. Because uh, everybody now, you know, it used to be the Nephilim, uh, the fallen angels, this reptilian race, the these shapeshifters that are here among us. Um, that used to be such a big secret, and everybody knows about the Hey, Brandy! About the connections to uh, Genesis 6 with these particular fallen angels and these things. But most don't know about the Genesis 3 and the corruption um, through Cain and the, the seeding of Satan's bloodline here on this planet and where the terrors came from. They they don't know that part yet. And I think that is so important. It's, it's such a, a big part of the puzzle, you know, that if you don't have that, I think you really don't have a foundation. Even though Genesis 6 can be somewhat of a foundation for this knowledge, unless you have Cain as the skeleton key, it won't unlock all the other secrets of the New Testament and Old Testament, in my opinion. Yeah, and I, I'm in agreement with that. Let me run an idea that uh, Jim and I talked about the other day past you, and then I want to talk about where you think the races came from. Um, Jim, um, Jim and I talked about at least his view that um, the three races came from originally God the Creator intended on just one race, uh, a race to have a relationship with him. And according to Jim, it was going to be the line of Abel, which later became uh, actually the line of Adam. And, right. and, and then and then later Adam had Abel and Cain, and I don't remember which one was first, but uh, um, I think Cain was. Cain was first. Yeah. And... And then, of course, later, Seth. So according to Pastor Williamson's research, those are your three root races, uh, Seth, Abel, and Cain. And before Cain killed Abel, there was a lot of time. And according to his research, Cain sired many offspring before um, the killing of Abel. And if you recall in Scripture, God offered Cain redemption. So he may still have been the literal seed of Satan, but up until the killing of Abel, some, he was offered redemption if he made the free will choice. So that's right, a very right. challenging concept. And then so do, do you think the three root races came from Cain, Abel, and Seth? And question two, um, what what was so significant about the killing of Abel that from that point forward – those children of Cain really were were pretty much condemned. Okay, and, and as far as the races, now I don't know specifically, and I would be really interested in seeing um, uh, Pastor Williamson's information on this, as far as uh, Cain, you know, fathering children prior to killing Abel. I'd be really interested to see whatever you know, stories or scriptures or whatever it is he, he got from that. Because um, as far as the races that I know, as far as, are you talking about the different colors um, and the different people? Yeah, pretty much what, what most would consider the races, yeah. Okay, well, now, I'm, I'm in a little bit different opinion on this. Because um, the, 
the way that I see it, it goes back to uh, the Tower of Babel. Because as far as, um, even though we know Cain was a whole, that was a whole different creature. He was a hybrid race. He wasn't a human race of being. He was a hybrid creature, and he was a, more in a bestial kind of, um, in a form, in a, a beast kind of form. Uh, some say he even had a horn, that he was marked with a horn. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But um, what is interesting is that there's the prophecy, too, that when he killed his brother, the Lord um, condemned him to die seven generations later by you know, one of his own children, who Tubal Cain is uh, the son of Lamech, the grandson of Lamech, who was seven generations. Some of was seven generations from Cain. He would be the one to um, go hunting with his father, uh, with his grandfather, Lamech, and Lamech was blind, but um, Tubal Cain would tell him, point to him which way to shoot and which direction to shoot at. Uh, and so when he did that, he saw this beast coming. They were out hunting one day. He saw this beast. He told his grandfather to kill it. When they went up to the creature um, to to see what it was that they had killed, they, they then recognized that this beast they had killed was actually their fore, forefather and their patriarch, Cain. And, but he looked like an animal. He looked like a beast. They said he even had a horn, and that was why um, his, uh, his uh, grandson you know, told Lamech to kill him. And, and that's why when Lamech heard that he had killed Cain, he became enraged, and he, he killed his grandson, Tubal Cain, and that's when he went home and he told his two wives that he had murdered a man and a child uh, to his own condemnation. And so that was the story. So I see Cain as being not human race at all, um, but being a hybrid race of beings, maybe even a, a giant race of beings. Maybe even maybe that's where the six fingers, six toes all originated and began. I don't know. But as far as the races. I always go um, back to the Tower of Babel and the creation of that stargate that they were trying to to, to make, and that um, you know that it was at that time that Satan had all the peoples of the world which were speaking one language. They all spoke Hebrew. They all uh, you know had similar culture civilization prior to you know the flood and then the receding of people after the flood and all that. Um, um, and so afterwards, you know, when the the brothers, of, I mean, the sons of Noah, they split up all the different people. The, the Canaanite tribes, Nimrod, they had brought all the peoples into this one world kind of government. And already there were, uh, you know, because the, there was the two different lines. And so they were already split amongst them. So there were already pagan tribes. There were already fallen angel worshipers, and there were already those that had been separated as Israel and that were the worshipers of the Most High, the knowers of Yahweh and and, uh, the followers of of his word and his commandments. But Nimrod had united all the peoples of the world and subjected even Israel at that time to serve in the creation of this new world order, one world government, and their attempt to create this target. Uh, so that they could infiltrate back into the heavens. Um, and it was at that time, in my opinion, and I don't know whether this is right or not, because I haven't studied uh, a lot as far as the detail of the races or not, but from what I understand, it was then that the Lord then came down and separated the, the, the peoples into different tribes, into tongues, into different races, split them up and put them into different nation states and put them all in the the different parts of the of the world and it was then that uh, all these different civilizations and cultures then started to come up in different parts of the world and and they grew up you know as different cultures like you have the hindu people uh, um you know then you have the, the south american and the mayans and the aztec and the incas and the olmecs and all that happening over here and and you had the Native American peoples, and then you also had the red-haired giants that were here. I mean, so there was mixed seeds and mixed people. There was different races of the hybrid Canaanite seed line, 
and then different races of the Adamic Sethite uh, image of God line. Um, but they were all forced to unify under Nimrod and um, to serve in the creation of the Stargate. But it was at that time that, you know, the Lord said that they're unified, they can do all, anything they set their mind to, we're going to go now, confound the tongues, separate the tribes, make them not be able to hear or understand each other. And he also, in my opinion, at that time, changed the appearances uh, of the different people so that once he created these nation states, that they would, you know, stay with the kind of people that look like them, that spoke like them, that were like them. Let me add something right at this point, because you you made a speculation that at this time he changed the appearance of these people. Well, another theory, which would align with everything you said up to that point, is that, is Jim's point, which is the three root races already existed, and here's, here's where it'll get strange, the line of Cain were the Caucasians. They were the Germanics, the Caucasian peoples. The, mm -hmm. the Philistines were, in fact, the actual Germans, unlike we've been told. Um, and the the line of Seth, if I recall, um, were the Semites. Uh, and and he, he claims that Jesus was, in fact, a, 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 a tan-skin-type Semite. And then you have the right, uh, right. the line of Abel, which would have been your black uh, group. He and so if you had all three groups living on the planet, they could still still speak a, the same language. They could still right. be, they could still be org organized under Nimrod to to create this tower. And then the Bible states that. Uh, that God split them up into nations and tongues, but they could right. have already existed as far as the different kinds of races. So maybe, maybe you see how that might align with that. Right, right. Yeah, I do see that. And then again, like I said, this is uh, this is something that I haven't studied. I've not been, I uh, haven't studied the races into great detail. But um, I would really be interested in. Uh, seeing his information, you know, and and then learning more because, like I said, I'm far from being any kind of expert on no, I on think, race and all that. I think Zen, you have some powerful information in your books and your knowledge, and I just, as the Lord gives each of us a little piece of the puzzle here, um, bringing it all together, I think is at the end here in times is, is providing tremendous clarity. I know it is for me. And I, I, I pray that through Christ's anointing and his will, uh, that what, what you and I and others are doing is it's making a difference for, for to help. Cause I'm, 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 uh, I've had similar experiences recently that I've explained some of these, what I call them God's top secrets to, to people. And they just light up. Everything starts making sense to them. The, right. the, the years of cultural churchianity, the churchians, um, which, which really just lead people into the Joel Olstein psycho babble, uh, feel, right, right. feel good believism. It, it, it makes people confused. And when you, you bring it all together on the purpose of who we were, why we're here, where we're going, what the whole game's about, People just wake up, and, and it, it's a truth that is revealed in the end time, as Daniel has stated. I think I think we are, you're doing a tremendous mission, and, uh, you know, God bless you, Zen. And, and I, I don't want, you know, this is not, I want to continue talking if, if you have some time, but I just, I, I really think uh, Jim, uh, Pastor Wilhelmson has some tremendous research. You do, Dr. Joy, uh, Alexander has some tremendous research, as do a, do a few others. But I, I say few because uh, there's some out there that I think are doing more harm than good, even if they have some truth in their ministry. So, Yeah, there's a lot of disinfo people out there, too. Uh, yeah, there's the whole gatekeeper thing, and the, um, Project Mockingbird and all that, that's... That's all in full force, you know. What was that? I said the whole project, Mockingbird and the Gatekeepers, they're, all that's out in full force, too. The disinfo is so widely available, too, that, you know, so many are confused. So many are confused, and a lot of them are being led to embrace these ancient 
alien theories and they're seeing the Anunnaki of the creators of humanity, you know. And so, yeah, when you when you give people the answers and and fill them with these truths, it's the light just goes off. And I think you know many many um, are starting to sense that there's there's something not right with America and the world, and that they're getting uncomfortable in their complacency, and so they're starting to to at least look into some of this, you know. Well, let's talk about because it is a. I'm getting a lot of static on your end, by the way. But let's talk about. Um, the Anunnaki and what what or who did they create so that the listeners of this audio in the future can have some clarity there? Sure, sure. Um, um, well, if you really want clarity, I would advise people to look up a show that I did, and it's also available as a video on YouTube. It's called The Three Creations of Adam and the Three World Ages, and I'm going to actually, I think I'm going to um, print this as a small mini book, too. To, to help people and so that they'll have the exact passages from not only the the scripture but also the um, the Sumerian text because you know I read all that as well I cover it all but um in that show I bring out scripture uh, and I explain you know the the three atoms how they connect to the three world ages and I explain the creation and the manipulation because a lot of people now know about the Genesis 1, the Elohim creation, the manipulation there, and then the Genesis 2 with the creation of um, the breath field, the spirit atom, that those are two separate things and two separate manipulations. Um, and one was done by uh, Yahweh Most High God, and the other by the fallen angels, Elohim, um, that were already condemned to this particular planet. This particular, But even in the, the Lost Book of Inky, the Anunnaki, they described themselves what it was that they found on this planet and what it was that they manipulated to create what they called their particular human or human. Um, and so it talks about in this particular book, and I, I wish I had this passage before me, but basically the creature that they found was like a Bigfoot. Uh, it had hair all over its body. It grunted, uh, it, it could not speak, um, and it was more monkey-like um, than human. And so this is pre-Adamic man that we're talking about, that they manipulated, created, and that they converted and, you know, did some genetic experiences with this particular thing. But it wasn't modern humanity, breath-filled, spirit-filled Genesis 2, uh, Adam, that they were manipulating uh, and, and, and working with. And you can also read, you know, read this for yourself. And then I'll talk, it talks about once they did all these different experiments to try to get this genetic um, being, this what they called a, a worker slave, because they were trying to create a slave race, uh, to mine gold and to serve the gods, that, you know, they went through these several different... And it, basically... It's genetic experiments, really. All these different genetic experiments that they did to fashion what would be the primitive working man or the primitive slave. And it describes, you know, how they had this this house uh, of quoting where they did all these genetic ex experiments and manipulations. It even talks about how they had these creatures hanging in cages and how they would do, you know, They'd go there with the other so-called fallen angel gods. They'd look at them. They'd watch them. They were pretty much like animals in a zoo, you know, and they were watching them to do all these things. And then it talks about how Enki decided that um, the genetic experimentation, the DNA corruption that they were doing wasn't working, so he actually, um, actually performed a bestiality act with this particular... Neanderthal, ape woman, or whatever it was, and that when he introduced his own DNA into this thing, that they got a stepped-up evolution of this particular pre-Adamic man-creature, but it still wasn't uh, a, a human, you know, to where um, 
where it was a, a modern and advanced man, even though they, you know, over their series of uh, manipulations, they were able to at some point get one that was then able to speak and that could, you know, understand language and be taught different things. Um, it was still primitive. It was still primitive to the human that was created on the sixth day that was placed as a second angel on this planet that has greater capacity and intelligence and knowledge than even the fallen angels that were already banished here and that left their first state.